What's up, everybody? Big Herc, fresh out. You tune in to another episode of Prison Talk. I'm here with the homie Peter, aka Chappie from Arizona. And um, you guys uh, ask a lot of questions, and sometimes I can't answer those directly because everybody has a different prison experience. But a lot of you guys are curious about the white guy's prison experience and the politics. And, you know, people out there promote a lot of stuff that. They put extras on it, so I want to get it from somebody else and let them kind of tell you what their prison experience was. So, um, Chappie, man, what what was the politics and you know the the structure of Arizona prison when you went in there, having to deal with that at such a young age at eighteen? Politics are, are uh, very strict. You know, each uh, I always say like there's two yard politics, there's three yard politics, and then four yard politics, which are, I mean, four yard and max, max is you're in your own cell, so it is what it is, but four yards are as strict as it gets, you know, and three yards are, cause you got lifers on three yards, so three yards are pretty strict. And that's why I actually start out on a three yard cause I had a non-dangerous crime, but I had so much time that they just put me on a three yard. So, but yeah, the politics is no joke. You know, when they first, when you first get there, um, you 100% do have a choice in the matter. You know, the only thing I always say you don't have a choice in is you gotta back your people up. So whether you're a Bible thumper in prison and there's plenty of Bible thumbers that aren't in gangs, they're not in the Aryan Brotherhood, they're not, they don't involve with anything, but if something happens with them and there's a riot, they're gonna be there with us. That's the only thing that's a no doubt, There's you have no choice in that, you know? But you full on have a choice if you want to um, click up or put in work, you know? You know, they asked me, um, schooled, the, schooled the rules down to me, you know? And at first, like I said, they told me the little thing of where uh, the dude running the building told me, do you know why they called it a sucker punch? And I told him no, he goes, because you're the sucker if you get punched. And he goes, so if you think you're gonna get into it, something, you just take off on him, I'm like, we can do that in prison? He said, yeah, I'm like, cool. So obviously I took that and ran with it. I used to box when I was younger too. So, um, but you full on have a choice. So then they asked me when, I'm, when I go out there and they say, uh, um, what do I want to do? Do you want to put in work do I wanna, or do you want to just be yourself? And I'm like, absolutely want to put in work. You know, I got 12 years for getting snitched on. So I absolutely want to put in work and do something bad to people that are snitched on other people, you know? Um, so I chose that life because the bigger thing with me is if I didn't choose that life, like I said, if you don't, if you don't pick that and you're going to be a Bible or whatever, you're just you're lame in prison, bro. And I, 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 I've never been lame in my life and I wasn't going to spend 12 years of my life being lame. So I had no choice but to be, be violent and click up, you know? And I, I remember uh, off camera, we, we had a, a brief conversation. You said like one of the first things you, you did as far as putting in work with, with somebody who was like your prison pop, man. How, how'd that go down? <sighs> that was brutal. And I, and uh, gosh, I still think about it. So once they tell me that it's literally, I have, I had this talk with the dude on the rec field, um, Back it up a little bit. I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot. There was another story. So I had first, when I told you, I came to find out afterwards, they thought I was like maybe a little gay or something because I was just a straight little pretty, but long, blonde, curly hair, bro. Um, and I had gotten a fight with the dude that was running my building who was a, he'd been down 10 years already at this point. I'm literally six, six, two, 160 pounds, 150 pounds. Um, and he was one of the dudes, you know, old school convicts dude, would be up doing thousand back rooms at five o'clock in the morning and stuff. And I always act like he was a badass. And I didn't like the dude from the start, you know? Yeah. So I was like, and I'm like, I gotta make a, do something to make these fuckers know I'm tough or something, you know? So I had actually just gotten a celly that night from the county jail that I knew. So I was trying to show off. I was a little young kid. I'm trying to show off. And I'd already been looking for someone to pick a fight with. And me and him didn't get along and we live right next to each other, you know? Um, so he makes some little stupid comment about us playing spades and having one of the little chairs in his thing. And I say something back to him and he says to me like, why don't you, respect your elders, you little young punk or something like that. And I just took off on him, beat the shit out of the dude running the building. So then after that happens, then a ton of people coming out and hearing what I did the next day. So then a lot of the old school dudes are always talking to me then too. Just getting in a fight and beating up the dude that was running my building um, got me a lot of notoriety and people are coming up to me talking to me. And then when I did the, when I actually put in work on my prison pops after that, um, so he asked me, they tell me that there's someone that I'm gonna need to get. Um, and they said, all they tell me is he's real close to you, but nothing can happen yet. And the reason they told me that is because the dude that was running the yard had been down 20 plus years and was finally trying to make it to a two yard. So if something bad happened on the yard right then, then he would have stopped him going there. So he'd already been reclassed, was waiting to go any day. So they said, once he's gone, we'll let you know. They wouldn't even tell me who it was. They just said it's someone close to you. Mm. I'm like, someone close to me? I've been here a few weeks. I'm a 19, eight, 19 year old kid after I got done in the county jail. Um, after he left, I get back from visit the next day and I, they call me over to the rec fence and tell me what it is and tell me who it is. I'm like, oh my God. Gosh, you're kidding me. But I'd already said I'm down for it. So you can't say, oh, I'm friends with this guy. Never mind. I don't want to beat him up, you know? Um, so he's like, I think you can do it though. And I'm just like, oh shit. So I had to go from what's, what's crazy enough about the story is we went from when I got back from visit that day, he was sitting in my house um, 
he was drawing a card for one of my family members, right? Mm. So then he gets he gets back, lets me go get all my stuff done. He goes over to his little cubicle. I get changed and do all my stuff, and he's over there. And then he starts working on the card. So we went from saying hi to him. He's in my cell to me changing, doing all my stuff, and he goes over to his cell to me going over to his cell while he's curled up, not curled up right there, but he's um, just on the desk drawing with his little headphones on, and I just literally come up from behind him and just start going to town on him. Mm. Um, and that was my prison pops. That's the dude that schooled me. So from then on, I always, dude, and and just I was such a mean and bitter person. So like anybody that from then on that I had to, once I was running yards and stuff, anybody that had to get somebody on the building that I was in or something, I, I used to make it a point to make the person that was closer to him do it just to get back at the people for like how hard that was for me. Absolutely, yeah, I did not want to do that. By making it somebody so close to you because this guy had apparently did something that they didn't like. Yeah, he had snitched on somebody else from the street. So, and then the dude had just hit the yard, so the paperwork obviously serviced on him. So that's what happened. So I would make it a point. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of it was just me being, I was just such a mean, bitter, angry person. So I wanted everybody to suffer like I was suffering, you know? So if I had to like put a hit on somebody in my building or something like that, I would usually pick the person that was the closest to him. That was someone that I already put their hand up saying they wanted to sit as, be a soldier, someone that was sitting at the back table, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, if you're sitting at the back table, you're putting in work. And, and that's another thing too that people don't realize. I've seen dudes on there be like, you know, like the man on the yard and this and that. And if somebody else hits the yard and paperwork come up, dude, it's like from this instantly, he's no good. Yeah. The shit, you know what I mean? It's a wrap. I've seen a big dude. I mean, I've seen him check in dudes like, you're like, God, then they checked him in? Yeah. Like, it's like, that's how quick it can happen. Just think, like that. They think, oh, they can tell. You know, and it, you know everybody telling you know, so much on social media, anyways. But then they take a tell, and it's just not going to follow. Absolutely, somebody's going to know about your telling, man. Yeah, and and you can be cool in the yard for five years, but it, no, matter. It, no matter what, it's going to happen one day or another. Yeah, no matter what. The surfaces, it's a wrap. And I've seen it happen to a dude running the yard before that turned out to be no good, almost. You know, and uh, not running the yard, but he was like the second dude in charge. You know, um, he was the dude's down. front man running the yard. You know, and then before you know it, the dude run, the dude's front man checks in. You know, because. Shit always surface, you know? People think that you can go in there and hide out. There's no hiding in there, bro. The only hiding is in PC when you're locked in a cell in PC. You can't hide from that stuff. And, and another thing that is that, you know, a lot of people come out and say different things like they were doing this and that, and that comes out. Absolutely. So don't think that, you know, oh, I was doing this and that. What year was this guy, what yard? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know somebody that was there. He wasn't doing that. Yep. So people make up a lot of stuff, too, to try to make themselves seem that they're more than what they are, and that comes out. Oh, God. You know, because I've been in places where I knew somebody, and they knew me, but I never had two words. But when I got out, they're like, hey, man, I remember you from Long Park, uh, 2001, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was there seeing you. Oh, yeah, blah, 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 you knew so-and-so. They do all my business, and I never even talk to them. Yo, there's other dudes like that that act like they were the man, they're doing this and that. We talk, get to talking about yards, and I'm like, I was on the yard at the same time as you. I didn't even know you. So if you were that person, yeah. there's no way I didn't know you because yeah. I was that person. You know what I mean? Yeah. But always, people always just try to front and act like, people always try to glorify all the prison stuff. I think it's going to get them notoriety out here. You know, like I was mad at myself for doing all that uh, violent stuff and risking catching all that time for myself because it gets you nothing out here. You know, all those years I risked putting in work for all of my people in there did nothing for me, bro, but just got me locked in a hole in there, thrown in a cage, multiple, multiple. I mean, I've probably been to the whole over 20 times. You know, I've been, like I said, every single four yard in the state, every single CDU in the state, everything known well, to man, bro. talking to you now and, and, and hearing you articulate yourself, I mean, in, in retrospect, looking back, man, I mean, out of all those people you were, you know, putting in work for and doing stuff with, how many of them people would you associate with on the street? Zero. Zero. A hundred percent. Flat out zero. And that's why I say when people like act like, oh, I was in there doing, man, so you would have that guy at your house for dinner? No. And those people telling on you too. Like my last yard, the dude running the yard told on me. Straight up. And I was just trying to chill and kick back. Um, that's all it is. And those are the people that you're risking, like, because I risk almost life sentences that could have been whatever, you know, because they can throw it, throw anything at you when you got multiple priors and stuff and doing violent stuff in there. Um, I'm risking all that for a dude that's going to tell on me himself and doesn't mean shit to me and never will mean shit to me. But he acts like he's his boss up dude, but at the drop of a dime, he can get some something off. He's gonna tell on you. Absolutely, one hundred percent. They're all telling, man. Ninety percent, ninety-nine percent of them, the baddest motherfuckers, are all telling in there. And if they haven't told, I always say this now: if they haven't told, they just haven't had the opportunity where they need yeah. to yet. Is there? I mean, in California, I know they were trying to integrate a lot of the the people who were no good into like the main the main yards. Were they trying to do a lot of that in Arizona too, or big time, big time? So. Um, out there in the CDUs, every single whole CDU, which is a whole, uh, is say there's 25 uh, cells in the hole, 20 of those are going to be all PC, at least. And with that PC, there's going to be people bouncing around the yards because out there in Arizona, 
the, the drug problem so bad, everybody's just checking in over drug debt. So there's, if they would let everybody go to PC that wanted to go to protective custody, more than, literally more than half of the state would be in protective custody yards and it wouldn't be protective custody yard then because then they'd be doing their own politics there. So they, I don't know what Arizona's doing. It's a, it's a slippery slope because when I left four and a half years ago, you know, like I said, every single hole is full of PC case. Everybody's trying to get into PC, but they won't let them in there. So it's just everyone's a hole. That's why it's the worst going to the hole in your GP. Like you said that the PC situation, people think like you PC up, but then you go to another yard fresh and somebody sends a kite like, hey, man, this guy owes me. If you collect, you can have whooped you up. Dude, this, you're, 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 going, you're get, getting put in work on you. People think they're going to PC and they're yeah. protected. They're not. You're protected during that two months you go to the hole exactly. and then they're going to let you out. Exactly. <laughs> and they're going to let you out. Because the only way you can even make it to those PC hideout yards now is you got to be a super established person. There has to be like a known hit from you from the Aryan Brotherhood. And it's like, like to where it's so bad to where even the SSU and the correction staff know that there's a kill hit on, like a, you're on the kill list, bro. You know what I'm That's saying? Why you're going right back to the yard. You're going right back to the yard. You sit in the hole for months and you go right back to another yard, you know? And if you're with a thousand news on that yard, you're going to be with a thousand news on the next yard. People get moved around so often, it's, it's just a matter of time for you to get noticed every time. And, and um, that's why I say, man, it's best just not to get involved, man, rather than be a rat. a rat. A rat person is the lowest piece of shit, snitch. I mean, dude, just don't even do it. Absolutely. Don't put yourself in that position where you owe somebody. People always said there's three things is gambling, drugs, and messing with punks. Don't touch that stuff and you ain't got to worry about putting yourself in a, a you know, fucked up position. Absolutely. That's the one thing I wish I would have done differently, just been chilled back and not, because like I, said, I, I looked up to those dudes so much when I was a young kid, man, and I was like, all I thought is I wanted to be the Aryan Brotherhood and I wanted to be this and that, which those dudes are the man, but they're all locked in cages. None of them are even on yards anymore. You know, those fools are all locked in cages and never well, going anywhere. Yeah, nothing, man. You know, I, f I feel bad for those dudes, but those dudes aren't even like the dudes that are on yards anymore now because those, those guys all got locked up in the late 90s, so you know? So they, they put in all that work, and now they're looking at, like, everything that was established is, like, look at what is, what's left. I mean, they put in all that work to do all this stuff, and now, I mean, they're uh, inner segregating people now. They're just starting this now. They're living, putting whites with blacks on four yards and stuff now. They have an entire four yard in Arizona right now that's just all people that are refusing to house another racist. And all the, like I said, the, the real brothers and stuff are just sitting in SME2 still, and they've been there for 10, 20 years. Yeah, and I mean, none of them even know how bad it gets on the yards nowadays. They probably can't, you know what I mean? So have you, have you seen, um, what, what is it, uh, Shot Caller? Have you seen that movie? Yes, so I've how, absolutely how, seen how, it. How, how real would you say that movie is? I said this, man. I said that's about as real of prison movies I've ever seen from one that's an actual, just a made-up prison movie. That's about as real as it gets, though, you know? Um, that type of stuff does happen in SMU too. That's right where it is. The guy went from being a, a stockbroker, guy that finally went and started putting in work and then basically left his whole family. Dude, I compare that to my story almost because I was never like a gangbanger. I never messed around with drugs. I was a little, I was a little preppy athlete, bro, you know, um, and wound up in there and then became clicked up with them. And so like, I, I looked at that like it was almost my life, not to that degree and not to try to even think I'm that important to, to, to think about it like that. But 100% it can happen just like that, you know? And, it's a lot, of, like I said, it's a lot about popularity, you know? So I, I just wasn't comfortable going in there and just being a lame for 12 years, you know? So, and then once you raise your hand, you can't pull it back down, you know? Um, and the stuff that they can ask you can get more and more serious. And um, so towards the end of my sentence, that's what I worried about a lot, that my hand was still up and I'm like, oh my God, I got a few years left. I hope they don't ask me to do nothing super crazy or I hope I don't have to do this and that, you know? And, um, but yeah, like I said, once your hand's up, your hand's up and it can't go back down. Well, I'm glad to see you uh, You were able to make it out of there, man, because like to be one of those people that's caged up and have some reputation in prison, man, that reputation means nothing on the streets. It means absolutely nothing to me. And that's all I fought for in there was to have this reputation. I remember, real quick story, when uh, the last yard I was on, because my whole, my whole time in prison, I felt like I was always trying to outdo everybody else because I'm from Ahwatukee, and I always remember they always said I'm from Ahwatukee, you know, I'm a, a blonde hair, this and that, blah, 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 so... A lot of these dudes came from gangster past and have been doing crazy stuff their whole lives, you know. So I, for some reason, I always felt like I had to over outdo them to get that, you know. And I remember, just to show you how messed up my thinking was, when I'm like, I'm like nine months to the gate. I don't even remember what I flipped out about, but I flipped out on somebody on the run or something. And one of these dudes that was like that was one of my homies, straight gangster dude from in there, you know, like my ace dudes that I used to hang out with in there. And I remember him telling me, he's like, Chappy, you got to calm down. And I'm like, what do you mean I got to calm down? He goes bro, you're going home soon. He's like, you got to calm down. He goes, I'm worried for you, bro. And I'm like, what do you mean you're worried for me? He goes, dude, you're so fucking angry and this and that. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm fucking angry. You know, I was happy then. I was like, I was like, and I remember thinking, I'm like, finally now I made it to where these motherfuckers know who I am or this and that, you know, and it's all bullshit, bro. It didn't do nothing for me, you know? Um, but that's how bad it is. And that's how brainwashed you get in there, bro. Like I was happy back then that, I, that they were saying I was fucked up and they were worried for me to get on the streets. Cause I'm like, I remember thinking, I'm like, okay, at least I, they know I'm one of them now. Wow. 
that's like a warped way of thinking too when you, you like buy into that you, absolutely you bought into the system program. and think i mean after, that's after 11 years straight i'm going home in like nine months and that's where my thinking is and i'm just getting released on the streets after that with thinking like that like i said thank god i had my family to babysit me and treat me like i was a 12 year old kid for the first six months you know because that's literally what it's like bro no joke, especially doing all that time, getting out, getting locked up from what should have been senior high school. Like it's, you have to not even take baby steps. It's less than baby steps at first. You have no idea. I, I mean, I still to this day have to call my little brother or something and ask him if something's okay that I'm doing. Cause like, I, and I'm, cause I'm so scared of doing something wrong now. I don't want to do anything wrong. And I know that that thinking messed a lot of my brain up. So I, I still double check a lot of big decisions I make now just to, and it's my, with my little brother. Yeah, that's a uh, man. I'm glad, like I said, you, you, you were able to do the turnaround, man, because, uh, you know, it could have been way, way, could have went the other direction, just as simple, you know, and, you know, on the flip side of, like, what you said, like, I know, growing up, I didn't have no big brothers or any male mentors, so I felt like I had to be this gangster dude on the street, and I did a lot of things I shouldn't have been doing, but I thought, like, you know, I'm, I'm a G, and then when I actually got locked up for doing something that was just way beyond robbing a bank with a gun, all this stuff, I'm like, man, what did I do that for, man? I'm like, God damn, how stupid can you be? Like, you're going you're gonna to get away, and then eventually they're still looking for you. I'm uh -huh. like, why did I even do that, man? And I just kept thinking, like, God, man, how, how now, what led to that? You know what I mean? Because it's a lot of, like you said, you build momentum to, to, to take on that mentality. It's not like one day you wake up and, man, I'm going to do this. It's like you, you worked up to that, and then you got to work back change all that absolutely so it's a, it's a process a regression process man but uh absolutely you have to reverse your thinking you gotta reverse your thinking and you have to like you know and that was for me i had to start doing it in, in prison because i was like i didn't have a family to really support or visit so i'm thinking like man if i don't do this i'm gonna be done i'll be like this old grandpa in here sweeping the, the hallways absolutely you know man. what i mean and this dude he, he left and came back and got a fresh 15. i'm like i don't want to be that guy and how often you seen that Day. Yeah, dude, who have nothing. Oh man, I was out for uh, nine months. I was out for eighteen. I'm like, that's it. Yeah, I just did twelve. I got out. You know, I was out for a couple of years and got a fresh. You know, you know, you need to. Yeah, you, you get anything under twenty minutes. I don't know how they do it, bro. I don't. I don't seriously, do I don't. A guy told me one time. He said, "How much time you got, youngster?" I said, "I got 120 months." He says, "Oh man, you got another one in you." I'm like, "What? <laughs> you got another? No, I don't have no more. Yeah, none. Yeah." None. You know what I mean? Straight up. <clears throat> so I couldn't do another minute in no, there. No I, joke. I, I, I couldn't. I, didn't, I wouldn't. You couldn't pay me to go in here and chill out with these dudes. Not you know for one mean? second. Not one second. So Especially I, knowing the stuff I know now even more, you know? It's just sickening, man. It's sickening. But I'm mm -hmm. glad, man, you, you, you made the turnaround, bro. And you are, you know, you're very, uh, you're a very good role model for those who have been through it and, and, and done something better with yourself, man. And you're not glorifying something that shouldn't be more no because it is not it's my it's my story but it, it definitely cool and if i had to do it over again i wouldn't have done it that way yeah i big hurt prison talk